Hello, welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics, and this is section 17.3, Properties of 2 by 2 Determinants. So in a pattern that should not at all be unfamiliar with you in algebra, we explored a new kind of number, matrix. We kind of looked at it, looked at different ways to analyze it. We then discovered this interesting thing called the determinant. Okay, and we discovered how to calculate the determinant. Now, every mathematician ever, once they learn how to do something, they are immediately going to explore methods of how to avoid doing that. Okay, and in the case of algebra, what we do is we use algebraic manipulations to eliminate any necessity whatsoever to do any addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Okay, in this case, we are going to explore the properties of the determinants to see how we can solve determinants without actually doing determinants. Okay. Hopefully this should get you excited, especially if you found determinants to be quite tedious and boring, okay? So, consider the two by two matrix A, right? So we have A11, A12, A21, and then A22, right? We are going to think of A as two columns. We're gonna describe it as uh, A1 with the superscript and A2 with the superscript, okay? So a1 is the column vector A11, A21, and then A2 is the column vector A12 and A22, okay? Pretty simple stuff. And so we're going to describe the determinant of A not as a determinant of the entire matrix, but as a determinant of these two column vectors, okay? And so all of a sudden, the determinant no longer looks like something you do to a matrix, but this looks like some way to multiply or combine these two columns together. This is a very interesting way to think of determinants, okay? To emphasize the dependence of the determinants on its columns, let's suppose we had two columns. We had B, which is just the column vector B1 and B2, and we had C, which is the column vector C1 and C2 then the determinant of the column vector B and the column vector C, that's the same as B1, B2, C1, C2, which is equal to B1, and I ran out of space on the paper here, B1, C2 minus B2, C1. So B1, C2 minus B2, C1, or C1, B2, whatever way you want to think of it, either way. Okay, that's what determinants are actually doing. What properties does this multiplication satisfy? Okay, so we're gonna write down some properties here. D1, the property D1 says if B is equal to B prime plus B double prime. So the column vector is actually the sum of two vectors. And so we're gonna say basically B1, B2 is equal to B1 prime, B2 prime plus B1 double prime, B2 double prime, okay? So this is the sum. Then the determinant of B1 prime and C plus the determinant of B2, B double prime and C is the same as the determinant of B prime plus B double prime and C, okay? So this is kind of a distribution law, right? So we're taking a sum of two column vectors and we're getting two determinants out of it, okay? We can also do this for C. So also if C is equal to C prime plus C double prime, then the determinant of B and C is the same as the determinant of B and C prime plus C double prime, which is the same as the determinant of B and C prime plus the determinant of B and C double prime, okay? That's interesting, isn't it? Okay, how would we go about proving this? Uh, well, in the book, he just does the math. It's pretty straightforward. Let's actually do that. Let's, let's uh, exercise algebra while we still get the chance to do algebra before we jump into calculus and more advanced mathematics. So we have D of B prime plus B double prime and C is equal to the determinant of B1 prime plus B1 double prime and B2 prime plus B2 double prime, and C1 and C2, right? So let's multiply that out. So we get B1 prime plus B1 double prime times C2 minus B1 prime, B2 prime plus B2 double prime times C1. Okay, so we took this guy multiplied by that and subtracted those two, multiplied together. Let's go ahead and distribute those terms. So we get B1 prime C2 
plus b1 double prime c2 minus b2 prime c1 minus b2 double prime c1, okay? Hopefully you see where this is going, right? So we actually have b1 prime c2 minus b2 prime C, c1 and then we have b1 double prime c2 minus b2 double prime c1, okay? And this first one is just the determinant of b1 prime, b2 prime, c1, c2. And this second line here is just b1 double prime, b2 double prime, c1, c2, right? And so that is the determinant of b prime and c and the determinant of b double prime and c. See how that works? Okay. Let's look at property D2. So D1 was that we can distribute the determinants. D2 says that if x is a number, then the determinant of x times one of the columns, just one mind you, not both, is the same as x times the determinant, is also the same as the determinant of the first column times x times the second column right? So this x factor, it's a number, it's not a matrix, can go on the outside or it can go on the other column, okay? The proof is rather easy, so we have d of x b comma c is equal to the matrix x b1 x b2 c1 c2, which is equal to x b1 c2 minus x b2 c1, which as you can see, is equal to x times b1 c2 minus b2 c1, which is just x times the determinant of b and c. Another way to look at it is this is also equal to b1 times x c2 minus b2 times x c1. So that's the same as the determinant of b times x c, right? Very simple to do, okay? At this point, we're going to talk about unit vectors. So we define E1 to be 1, 0, and we define E2 to be 0, 1. And we can define the E matrix to be equal to E1, E2, or just this matrix here. Okay? So it just has ones on the diagonal. That's the E matrix, a unit matrix. So these are unit vectors. And this is the unit matrix. Okay. So property D3 says that if E is the unit matrix, then the determinant of E, which is the same as the determinant of these two unit vectors, is equal to 1. Well, that's pretty simple, right? I always like problems like this where you just know something's one. Uh, why is that so? Well, it's just this column, this times that minus that times that, so that's pretty obvious, right? D4 says that if two columns of the matrix are equal, the determinant is equal to zero. So D of the same column is zero, okay? So why is that? Well, let's take B1, B2, B1, B2, so we get b1, b2 minus b1, b2, which is 0, right? So if we can take the determinant of the same matrices, we get 0. So if we can reduce somehow the, the matrices that we're solving the determinant for to column vectors that are the same, we get 0, okay? So he calls these first four properties the fundamental properties, and then he has some more properties that he wants to share with you. Uh, d5, let's see if I can fit this on a piece of paper. D5 says, if we add a multiple of one column to the other, then the value of the determinant does not change. Okay, so if we have B plus X times C and C, we're taking the determinant of, of, of a column vector times a multiple of the other vector, we're going to just ignore that multiple of that vector, okay? 
Uh, and on the other side as well, we get the same result. So either side doesn't matter. Okay. The proof is rather easy to do. You can do this by writing out the determinant, or we can use d1, d2, and d4. So we say d of b plus x c comma c is the same as d of b comma c plus d of x c comma c, right? So we use that property that says uh, distributive. This is d1, I believe, right? So we distributed that out. And we're going to keep d of b comma c alone. And then what we're going to do is pull out the factor x times d of c comma c. And that is d2, I believe. And then finally, we're going to note that that's 0. So d of b comma c plus 0. And that's d4 that we just proved up here because of the same columns. Okay. So that is rather easy to prove without actually solving any determinants. So we're already kind of at a higher level now where we don't have to think like regular people about multiplying numbers together. We just do determinants and we just apply the properties and we can solve problems. Okay. D6. Hopefully this is getting exciting. This is, this is always the exciting part of math for me is when I don't, I don't have to do math anymore. I can just use these little simple properties that I've learned. If two columns are interchanged and the value of the determinant changes by a sign. So the six says that if we take the determinant of B and C, that's going to equal minus the determinant of C comma B. And what this means is that determinants are anti-commutative. Okay. Basically, an anti-commutative means that when you have two things that you combine, it's the same as combining them in reverse, but you must use a negative sign. Okay, so it's important to remember this. There are some multiplications, particularly when you're doing vector math, if you're doing the cross product, it is anti-commutative. Okay, how do we prove this? Uh, well, we can use D1, D2, and D4 again. So we say zero is the same as this determinant, right? Because we're using the same column and vectors, taking the determinant of that, we get zero. Okay, so let's break this up into d of b comma b plus c plus the determinant of c comma b plus c okay should still equal zero and then we're going to say well this is just the determinant of b and b and the determinant of b and c and this is the determinant of c and b plus the determinant of c and c right well this is zero and this is zero okay so we get zero has to equal the determinant of b, c, plus the determinant of c, comma, b. And so therefore, these must be equal to the minus of the other. Okay? That is what we wanted to see. Okay? Again, you could do this if you wanted to sit down and do, like, actually solve the determinant. You could do this. Or we can just trust in the conclusions that we've already made because we've been very logical and consistent. You know? Here... He gives kind of, now that we know all this advanced mathematics, we can actually solve the system of linear equations a little bit quicker. So we have a1x plus b1y is equal to c1. a2x plus b2y is equal to c2. So we can write out the columns like this. So we can say this is x times the a column plus y times the b column is equal to c. Okay? So uh, suppose that x and y are solutions of the system using our properties of determinant. We have the determinant of c comma b is equal to the determinant of x comma a plus y comma b comma b, right? So if we, t if we were to take the determinant of c and b together, right? Uh, well, what is c? c is just x a plus y b. So that's the determinant of x a plus y b. Okay, and so we break this down into the determinant of x a comma b plus the determinant of y b comma b, right? We know where this is going. That's going to be zero because we can take the y out and the determinant of b and b is zero. Okay, and we can take the x out. So this is x determinant of a comma b. Okay, so if we solve for x, we get x is equal to the determinant of c comma b divided by the determinant of a comma b. That was quick, wasn't it? But surprising there. You can do the same thing for y, okay? And you'll find that the determinant of y is equal to the determinant of b comma c over the determinant of a comma b, okay? 
So if you're going to do the determinant of y, I recommend switching CB for BC. Okay. All right, there's not much more to say on this. Uh, the exercises are just asking you to prove for yourself some of the properties, uh, the opposite sides of the properties. Um, number five, number four um, are to solve for the linear equations. Uh, number five refers back to chapter two, section one. Use determinants to solve that. Suppose number six, number six is interesting. Okay, so we know that the determinant of C A comma B is the same as C times the determinant of A comma B. Well, suppose we take an entire matrix. So we have a matrix A is a matrix. Sorry for the notation confusion. And we take some constant C and multiply that by A, such that the matrix is now equal to C A 1 1, C A 1 2, C A 2 1, and C A 2 2. Okay? So in this case, what would the determinant be? Okay? Uh, you can think of this as C A 1, and I'm sorry, no comma. C A two. Okay, that should help you get that one solved pretty easy. Let A number seven, let A equals A one A two and B equals B one B two define their dot product A dot B by the formula A one B one plus A two B two, for instance, blah 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 blah. This a dot product is a number. Prove that this product is commutative and distributive with respect to addition. Okay, so number seven. Number seven. Uh, do this on your own, please. This is not very hard. Okay. And so you learn what the dot product is, you learn how to solve it, and you learn how to use it. Prove the product is commutative. What that means is if you have A dot B, that's gonna be the same as B dot A, okay? And prove that it is distributive with respect to addition. That means A dot B plus C is equal to A dot B plus A dot C. Okay, so given the rules, so again, we have a dot b is equal to a1 b1 plus a2 b2. I should use capital A's, so this should be a dot b is equal to that, okay? And capital A's and B's everywhere else here, okay? My notation is kind of bad, but you get it. You get how it works, okay? And then calculate the dot product, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed this section. Um, this is, of course, entirely related to dot and cross products. If you've seen my video on that, I encourage you to look it up. It'll tell you what dot and cross products are in terms of physics, not so much in terms of math. And uh, that's obviously a very interesting topic, especially when you consider triple products and you start taking the derivatives and the integrals and everything like that. I, anyway, this video is too long. Thank you for watching. Take care and bye bye. This video was part of my series on basic mathematics by Sergey Lang. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell, like and share this video. You can find me on Discord and support me on Patreon. Thanks a million.